Hey, it's Chris Homestead and Hardway, and some people asked us about what do you do with your tomato plants, and I see a lot of confusion about holding them up. And it's not hard, it's the easiest thing in the world. These little old tomato cages right here, they work real good for cherry tomatoes. But they don't do so hot for a big, like butter, butter boy or a big hybrid tomato. But this is what you do. These planters are open on the bottom for a reason. Now they can feel a little bit. Not get it where you're cutting all the roots off you can make a plant. We've already got this in there, so let's do this in first. I'm trying them a little bit. Get a piece of shrine there. About half that, though. Alright, go. As high up as I can. And don't tie it tight. Don't tie a tight knot around the actual tomato plant. Come up here on your T post. They got some little. Places the whole wire, or you can go through the hole, or you can tie it around it, or however you want to do it. Ain't no wrong way. Not as long as it holds up when you get through, you did it right. It's time to plant it. That's all you got to do. You don't need to go through all this trouble of taking cow panels and cutting them and all this stuff for the tomato plant that you're going to pull up. You're going to pull it all up when you get through. Going. And really and truly, if I won't see you, just give me a longer piece of this. You wouldn't have to do anything. But uh, we're going to tie these up. I'm going to show you one more sprig here. And these plants look a little bad. I'm not sure why. Mainly because we figured out uh, too much nitrogen was the main culprit behind blossom end rot, and we don't have too much fertilizer to it. But they're making tomatoes, making plenty of tomatoes. And uh, honestly, I don't, I'm not sure why I care what the tomato plant looks like, as long as it's making plenty of good tomatoes. So, we're kind of leaving it at that, I suppose. But anyway, like I said, she's going to cut it off, and after we get them tied up, we'll let you see what it looks like so the video ain't 45 minutes long on half time of the month. We're back on. Yeah. Anyway, that's what they look like when they get done. And uh, something else. I do think there's something to this. I don't ever sucker my tomatoes. Every time I've ever suckered my tomatoes, they got... Uh, Eight foot tall. Yeah, eight foot tall. And the wind blow them over. But I think there's something too. The old people always said you didn't want no leaves on the tomato, no branches or no leaves to touch the ground. See, that's how they get disease. And I think there might be something to that. There may be some truth behind that. But anyway, the T post, time to it. Try to time at a fork. Try to go where the weight's at. Don't tie it tight or don't wrap it around the plant. Tie a loose loop and just tie it to a, those, those are eight foot T-posts. And uh, that'll do everything you need to do. When you get, when you pull the tomatoes up, you pull the T-post up with them. I do use the little small cages to support them. When they're babies. When they're babies, I put a cage around them when I set them out. We plant them in these planters right here inside the kitchen. We got a few more behind the house, two or three, and some cherry tomatoes over here. But uh, Darling likes tomato sandwiches. We don't try to put up a bunch of tomatoes. We use a few to eat, give a few away. But I eat a lot of tomato sandwiches. But anyway, especially if you're in town, this is a good little system. I don't like tomatoes in the garden because they're too aggravating to fly around. And we just don't need that many. My daddy plant three rows of them, but I don't need them. But just a little quick video. I appreciate you watching. And remember, anything we do, you can do. You just got to get there and do it, and you'll never plow a field by turning it over in your mind. 
And what that means is you'll never tend a garden by sitting on the couch thinking about it. Y'all have a good one.